A very blessed Sunday morning to everybody. Today is the third Sunday of the month of June and it's Father's Day. So I'd like to greet uh, all fathers out there a happy and a blessed Father's Day. May all of us be blessed by the Father of all fathers, our Heavenly Father, our Father God, of course, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, I would like to welcome everybody once again into our uh, series for the month of June. And of course, it's foundations. A very important topic, especially for all of us. And we would like to endeavor today on the third topic, especially this is the third Sunday. And so, let us uh, just review our overall objective after the series have been over, uh, every child of God, every creature of God shall have been founded deeply on the solid foundation which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang pakay natin is pagkatapos ng ating series, lahat ng nakinig dito ay magkaroon na ng isang ya matibay, isang solidong fundasyon sa ating Panginoong Jesus. And of course, uh, last first Sunday, we went with understanding foundations. Okay, and then of course, uh, session number two, that was last uh, Sunday, standing on the sure foundation. Okay, we, we went with Isaiah 28 verse 16, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, and we have seen that when we talk of sure foundation, we talk of firm, strong, immovable, a solid, and hard foundation. And today, we will be talking about our session number three, and that is repairing our foundation. Repairing our foundation. From now on, when we talk of foundation, we will be talking about our spiritual foundation, which is different from Jesus Christ, our sure foundation. And so this will be our, yeah, this will be our text, by the way, Psalm, 1, uh, Psalm 11, verse 3, and the book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 12. Okay, and this will be our objective. Tingnan natin ang ating pakay. Okay, session 3 objective. All people will fully understand the concept of repairing foundations and eventually apply it to their lives. And I would like you to know that this is very much applicable to all of us. If there's one thing na kailangan natin gawin sa ating mga buhay ay palaging i-repair, palaging palakasin, palaging patibayin ng ating fundasyon. Okay, but I would like to clarify Ano ba tong foundations, spiritual foundations na ating pinag-uusapan? Okay, this is very important. Okay, point number one, what's our spiritual foundation? Okay, we have been talking about Jesus Christ as the sure foundation. But if we talk of our spiritual found foundations, what does it mean? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay, thank God for the Holy Spirit's guidance. And let me tell it from the outset ito. Our spiritual foundation is our connectivity to the sure foundation. Connectivity, what else? Our attachment. Our attachment to the sure foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And what else? Our stand and how we are built. Kung paano tayo pinapatayo o tumatayo doon sa sure foundation natin pinag-usapan, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let, let us uh, go over. It is our connectivity to the sure foundation, our attachment to Him, our stand, yung katayuan natin, and how we are built into that foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it will be clearer as we go on. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Okay, of course, we are, go, we are coming back to our main verse, Psalm 11, verse 3. Anong sabi? When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? So, pag pinag-usapan ang foundations ito, it would refer to our spiritual foundations. It will not refer to the sure foundation which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the sure foundation will always be sure, will always be solid, will always be immovable. There is no defect in the, in the sure foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, but when we talk of foundations here, especially in Psalm 11, we are talking about our spiritual foundations. Kung paano tayo nakatayo doon sa sure foundation, kung paano tayo binabangon, how we are being built into the sure and solid foundation. And so Psalm 11 verse 3 would be very important. And then, going, going to Ezra chapter 4 verse 12. Okay. Uh, this is, by the way, those, uh, the, the opponents, the opposition to the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. Okay, they are reporting to the king that the Jews who are rebuilding the, the walls of Jerusalem, they are reporting to the Jews what the Jews are actually doing. So, they are saying to the king, the king should know that the Jews who came up to us from you have gone to Jerusalem. Why? Ano ba nangyari dito sa Jerusalem noon? Because of their rebellion, because of their disobedience, they were, cap they were made captive into Babylon. Yes. And so sabi rito, and are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city. And they are restoring the walls, it says, and, and repairing the foundations. So it should be very clear that this topic of repairing our foundation is so much biblical, very biblical for that matter. And so it says they are rebuilding, re repairing, and it is said in the context of rebellion and wickedness. Okay, dito natin makikita isang, isang hint na kung ang isang tao, isang mananampalataya na just ay rebellious and wicked, pwede nating sabihin, he has a faulty foundation. Mali ang kanyang fundasyon. O baka sabihin natin, wala siyang fundasyon. Yun ang mahirap. Ha? Okay? So, yes. And then, going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. Let's see. In verse 10, it says, By the grace God has given me, I lay the foundation as an expert builder. Si Paul dito ay nagsasalita. Ang sabi niya, dahil sa biyaya na bigay ng Panginoong Diyos sa akin, sabi niya, I lay the foundation. Aking inilatag ng isang foundation as an expert builder. Magaling si Paul. Okay. Alam niyo kung bakit uh, sasabi niya expert builder siya? Dahil alam niya yung mga solid truths about the Lord Jesus Christ, the revelations of the Word of God, alam na alam ni Paul eh. That's why, ang sabi niya, I lay the foundation as an expert builder. And then, ano sabi? And someone else is building on it. Okay. On the foundation of Jesus Christ, someone else, in fact, someone else, God's people must build on that foundation. Yung inilatag na foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us believers should now begin to build on that foundation. And someone else is building on it. And sabi niya, but each one, ito na, should be careful. Bawat isa na nagpapatayo dun sa foundation na inilatag na ng Panginoong Diyos, sabi niya, should be, dapat maging maingat. Each one should be careful how he builds. How he builds. The foundation which is the Lord Jesus Christ, the only foundation, has already been laid. On that foundation, all believers of the Lord Jesus Christ are building. But the Word says that we are to be careful. Kailangan nating 
maging maingat kung paano tayo magpatayo dun sa fundasyon na yan. How he builds, he says. And then it says here, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, let's get this straight once and for all. Walang ibang fundasyon na pwede nating pagtrasan kundi ang Panginoong Jesus lamang. And I have been saying that other foundations are sinking sands. They are sinking sands. They will do us no good, okay, if we trust in them. Because there is only one foundation that we need to stand upon or we need to trust on. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And in verse 12 and 13, let's see. If any man builds on this foundation, okay, sino ba yung any man dito? Believers. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Unbelievers can never uh, build on that foundation. Bakit? Eh, wala nga silang faith eh. Uh, if any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones. So dito na natin makikita na ang Panginoon, kung merong kagustuhan na, sa ating lahat, ay kung baga gagamit tayo ng mga mahalagang bato. Okay, gold, silver, by the way, costly stones are precious in the eyes of God. Remember the Lord say, saying, sabi niya, the gold is mine and the silver is mine. The costly stones, they are pleasing in the sight of God. Kaya kung magpatayo ang bawat isa sa atin, on that foundation, we must choose things that are precious in the eyes of God. Things that are yeah, that would matter in the eyes of God. Gold, silver, costly stones are heavenly things, are godly things, are precious things in the eyes of God. As compared with what? Ito, wood, hay, or straw. Wood, hay, or straw are representative of worldly things. Things that are not pleasing in the eyes of God. At alam natin yun, ha? kung tayo magpatayo dun sa fundasyon, huwag natin haluan ng mga bagay na hindi kaaya-aya sa harapan ng Panginoon. Yes. And so, there. His work, the work of that man, building on that foundation, will be shown for what it is. Sabi niya, because the day will bring it to light. Ano ba yung day dito? Yung day dito, by the way, is the day of judgment. The day. It's the time of recon, the day of reckoning. Okay? Kung baga, the day of judgment, the day where our works will be reckoned, will be tested, kung totoo, kung kaya-aya, sarapan ng Panginoon, the day of judgment will bring it to light. Ang sabi rito, it will be revealed with fire. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of its men's work getting it straight again when we build on that foundation we would like to make sure that we are going to use things that are precious in the eyes of god things that are pleasing in the eyes of god things that matter in the eyes of god so that when the day when the day of judgment when the fire of judgment will come you know our work can stand it will withstand the fire of the judgment that's why how important that is okay we'd like to review what's our sp spiritual foundation again is our connectivity to the to the sure foundation, our attachment, our stand, yung katayuan natin, and how we are built, kung paano tayo, yeah, napapatayo doon, o nababangon doon sa nag-iisang uh, siguradong fundasyon, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, itong, alam mo itong verse na ito, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, it is said in the context of building. Okay, ano yung anong ginagawa ni Paul dito kung babasahin natin yung previous chapter, tinutukoy niya yung tungkol doon sa yung sa pagtatanim 
at pagdidilig. Pagtatanim at pagdidilig. The growing of the building. The growing of the spiritual lives of the people of God. Yes. And that's why today, moving on to our point number two. Sa point number two, indicators of a faulty foundation. How do we know that our foundation is a faulty one or a weak one? Okay? May problema dun sa fundasyon. Okay? Mahina yung fundasyon. What are the indicators? Okay, let, let, me, uh, let me go with the first. Number one, persistent unbelief. Kung palagi o patuloy yung iyong pagdududa, yung hindi mo paniniwala, okay, you have a faulty foundation. Okay, ang sabi ng Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12, See to it, brothers, that none of you, none of you, sabi niya, has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Alam niyo ba ang mga hudyo? Okay? Lahi nila ang pinili ng Panginoong Yesus upang ipahayag siya bilang kanilang tagapagligtas. Bilang uh, tagapagligtas nating lahat. Okay? And yet, they persisted in their unbelief. Hanggang ngayon, karamihan sa mga Hudyo doon sa Israel, alam nyo ba, naghihintay pa rin ng Mesyas, ng tagapagligtas, samantala Jesus had already come more than 2,000 years ago. And they still persist in their unbelief. Okay, that's a demonstration that they do not have a foundation at all. They are standing on a faulty or no foundation at all. That's number one. Okay, number two. No true repentance. Walang tunay na pagsisisi. Okay, you have a faulty foundation kung pagkatapos mo magsisi, tapos patuloy ka pa rin sa pagkakasala. You have a faulty foundation. Walang patutunguhan ang iyong Christian life kung patuloy ka pa rin sa pagkakasala. Okay, 1 John chapter 3 verses ano sabi? No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. Walang sino man na nabubuhay kay Kristo o sa Panginoon na nagpapatuloy sa kanyang kasalanan. No one. E din ang sabi niya, no one who continues to sin, walang sino man na nagpapatuloy sa kasalanan ang sabi niya, ay nakakita sa kanya o nakakilala sa kanya. Yes. You know, when Jesus Christ preached for the first time, for the first time, ha, ang unang salita ng kanyang binanggit ay repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hindi ka magsisisi para ulitin lang yung pagkakasala mo. The essence of repentance is pinagsisihan mo isang bagay at nangangako ka na huwag mo nang gawin. That's the essence of repentance eh. Pero kung nagpapatuloy ka, ibig sabihin, wala kang tunay na pagsisisi. At ano yun? Ano ibig sabihin nun? You have a faulty foundation. That's number two. Number three, no appetite for the word. <laughs> kung wala kang gana sa salita ng Diyos, let me get it straight. You don't belong to God. You don't have any foundation at all. Yes. When you don't have an appetite for the Word of God. Alam nyo itong lockdown from March 16, by the way, until today. April, May, June. Three months na. Kung meron sana tayong iginugol ay yung oras upang, yes, i-desire ang salita ng Diyos. If you don't have the appetite for the Word of God, I tell you, you have a problem in your Christian life. If you don't live by the Word of God every day, yes, kung hindi ka nagme-meditate, 
meron kang problema. That's why, eto, nandito tayo para titingnan lahat etong mga, yeah, mga dahilan o oh, manifestation, okay, na ang isang tao ay may faulty foundation kung siya ay meron lahat nito. So, number one, nakita natin. Okay? Number two, number three. Number four, by the way, is wavering faith. Wavering faith is yung nananampalataya ngayon, tapos nagdududa. So, changing faith. Okay? Changing faith. Nananampalataya ngayon, nananalig ngayon, tapos nagdududa. Okay? Yan ang isa sabi. Wavering faith ang pang-apat. Okay? Pang-apat. Okay, we would like to continue. Of course, we'd like to repeat yung number three. Ah? Manifestation or an indicator na ang isang tao o mananampalataya ay merong faulty foundation. No appetite for the word. Okay. Alam niyo ba ang nature ng isang mananampalataya? A true believer, kung baga nagdeposito ang Panginoon dyan ng isang nature, the nature of God, and that nature will always crave the things of God. At ang unang hinahanap ng nature na yan, ninalagay ng Panginoon sa isang mananampalata is, yeah, he craves the word of God. Alam nyo, nung, nung ako'y naging unang mananampalataya, I tell you, literally, I would devour the word. Para bang kung pwedeng kainin yung buong bibya, parang ganun eh. Yeah. That's why, no appetite for the word. Huh? Okay? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, ang sabi doon, but the message they heard, talking about the Israelites, was of no value to them. Was of no value to them. How do you receive the word of God every Sunday? May value ba sa'yo? O binabaliwala mo? Kung binabaliwala mo, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Hmm? Yes. But the message they heard was of no value to them. Why? Because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Okay, so when we hear the Word of God, we make sure na dala natin ang ating pananampalataya. Why? Because it is faith that will help us to receive the revelation of the Word. Faith will help us to see the Word of God to make it palatable in the eyes of God. Huh? So, no appetite for the Word is one manifestation. And lastly, wavering faith. Yung wavering faith, by the way, is yung nananalig ngayon, nagdududa ngayon. Nananampalataya ngayon, tapos nangangamba ngayon. Yeah. There is a wavering, it's always changing, hindi stable yung faith. So, 1 Kings 18 verse 21, the prophet Elijah would challenge, alam mo, yung mga prophets di Baal. Ang sabi rito in 1 Kings 18 verse 21, How long will you waver between two opinions? Okay. Hanggang kailan kayo? Ha? Huh? mananampalataya kay His, kay, sa, sa Panginoong Diyos, tapos mawala ang pananampalataya niya, pupunta kayo kay Baal at manampalataya sa Kanya. Yan ang ibig sabihin dito. How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. Kung ang Panginoon ay Diyos, sumunod na kayo sa Kanya. And then ang sabi niya, but if Baal is God, follow Him. Pipili ka na. Sa lahat ng mananampalataya, kailangan pumili ka na kung, Diyos, kung, kung ang Panginoong Yesus ay Diyos, Siya lang dapat yung pagsilbihan mo. Huwag mo nang isama pa si Satanas sa pagsisilbihan mo. That's exactly what it is saying. That's why these are four manifestations, indicators that you have a faulty foundation. And now, we go with point number three. How to repair our spiritual foundation. Thank God for this good news. 
for this hope. God is willing for you and I to have our spiritual foundation repaired. Gusto ng Panginoon yan. God is a God who would always be gracious. Yes. And so how? Number one, dapat unwavering yung faith mo. Ha? Hindi ka na limba-limba sa pananampalataya mo. Okay? Ang sabi ng Psalmist, chapter 26, verse 1 to 2, I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Okay, especially in the midst of COVID-19, paano ba yung pananampalataya mo sa Panginoon? Dapat solid, dapat wala kang pangamba, hindi ka natatakot na kung ano, ano mangyayari sa akin, may COVID-19, ano mangyayari sa, sa aking economy, personal economy, family, family economy, ano mangyayari? No, 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 no. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. And then ang sabi ng Nang salmi, sabi niya, test me, O Lord. Lord, subukan mo ako. Subukan mo ang pananampalataya ko. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Wow. We are, we are being tried. For three months now, COVID-19 is, is in our midst. At tinitingnan ng Panginoon kung sino ang totoong nananampalataya, nananalig sa Kanya. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. Talagang itong salmis na ito talagang gusto niya ha? na ang Panginoon ay talagang subukin siya. Okay, that's number one, unwavering faith. Ha? Number two, genuine repentance. Okay, genuine repentance. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Ano sabi? Godly sorrow brings repentance. Ang, ang makadiyos na pagsisisi, yeah, yeah, na, yeah. The, the godly sorrow, sabi rito, brings repentance. Ito yung tunay na pagsisisi that leads to salvation. That leads to salvation. And sabi niya, and leaves no regret. Kung yung pagdadalamhati mo, alimba umiiyak ka siguro dahil sa kasalanan mo, yan ang nagdudulot ng tunay na pagsisisi na patungo yan sa kaligtasan mo. And sabi rito, and leaves no regret. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo nababalikan yung iniwanan mo, yung tinalikuran mo. It leaves no regret. Ang totoong nananampalataya sa Panginoon ay may tunay na pagsisisi. Kung ano yung ginawa niya noon ay hindi niya nagagawin ngayon. At kung mag, mag, magkasalaman ay kumbaga, kumbaga unknowing, unknowingly na nagkasala siya. Hindi niya Parang in, in, hindi niya sinadya na magkasala. Yan ang ibig sabihin yan. So, genuine repentance. Alam mo, for three months now, kailangan sana natin na talagang nagpakumbaba na sa Panginoon, ipinahayag yung ating totoong pagsisisi. Genuine repentance. Yes. And as sabi rito, but worldly sorrow brings death. Worldly. Yung makamundong yeah, pagdadalamhati ay... Yeah, nagbibigay ng kamatayan. It brings death. Okay, number three. Longing for the word. Ito yan. Ha? As opposite yung kanina, kung faulty foundation ka, there is no appetite for the word. But when you have a, a, a uh, strong foundation, you are longing for the word. You're craving for the word. You're yearning for the word. Hinahanap mo ang salita ng Diyos eh. Huh? Psalm 42, verse 1 to 2. As a deer yearns for running streams, so I yearn for you, my God. Yun, ang spirito ng isang tunay na mananampalataya na merong malakas sa fundasyon, hinahanap niya ang salita ng Diyos. Kanta ito eh. As the deer panted for... The waters so my soul long after thee. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. Ito ang sabi rito, ha? Ah? Ito ang sabi sa verse 2, I thirst for God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where's the living God? The living God is manifested in His Word. Right there in the Word because the Word of God is life. 
It's alive, it's active, sabi ng salita ng Diyos. You can find the living God in the living word. I thirst for God, the living God. And sabi nito, when shall I go to see the face of God? Where do you see the face of God? The face of God is seen in the face of Christ. And the face of Christ is seen in the face of the word of God. Pag nagme-meditate ka dyan, yeah, na, nasusumpungan mo, no? nasisilahayan mo ang kalalhatian ng muka ng Panginoon. So it's right there in the Word of God. That's number three. And number f- four, passionate meditation on the Word. Kung ikaw ay nagpapatuloy, yes, na nagme-meditate, ito passionate, ha? yung madamdamin, yung mainit, na pagnilay-nilay sa salita ng Diyos. Joseph chapter 1 verse 8, ano sabi? Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Huwag mong hayaan na ang a libro ng batas ay lisanin ang iyong bunganga. Ang sabi dito, do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. That's a passionate meditation on the word when you do it day and night. And you are repairing your foundation if you do that. And number five, complete obedience to the word. Nasabi ko ito noon, ha? the main key for us to strengthen our foundation is obedience to the word. Sinabi ni Lord yan. Sabi ni, whoever comes to me, hears my words and puts them into practice, ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesus. So complete obedience to the word of God, ituloy ng Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, sabi niya, do not let the book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. That's complete obedience. And ano sabi niya? Then you will be prosperous and successful. These are the five keys if you are to repair your foundation and have your foundation in accordance with the purposes of God, with the design of God. You will be able to repair your foundation. That's why today, church, body of Christ, not only in the Philippines, but worldwide, let us go back to the Word of God. There is no other way for us to repair our foundation. Most important is this, going back to the Word and obey it. Yes, hallelujah. I am closing with this conclusion, and this will be it. Our spiritual foundation, again, is our connectivity, our attachment, our stand, and how we are built on the only sure foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Ito yung ating spiritual foundation. Okay, how are you connected to the Lord? Very strong ba? How are you attached to the Lord? Very strong by yung attachment mo. By the way, when the Lord speaks about Levi, Levi, Levi means attached, attached to the Lord, okay? And so, our stand and how we are built on the only sure foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must ensure that it is strong all the time, yung ating spiritual Foundation. Gusto natin makasigurado. And of course, my commitment will be this. I commit to repair my spiritual foundation following the five steps. Meron tayong five steps na kita doon. Okay? Just faithfully commit to follow them. Okay? To ensure that your spiritual foundation is strong all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, let it be that you bring home the revelation. You bring home whatever you can. And before the presence of God, do everything you can to ensure that your foundation, your spiritual foundation is being repaired. And so, let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this time that we can come to you in your presence, Lord God. And thank you, Lord, that you would continue, Lord God, to bless your people, not only in our nation, the Philippines, but also worldwide. And Lord Jesus, may you cause your people to repair their spiritual foundations 
by your abundant grace, by your abundant power, by enabling them, by empowering them, by your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we just would like to thank you for the revelation today. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless us all.